Hmm, found something. Look there. Can you see that? The pattern? The basic pattern. Wait, yeah. It's a reticulated python. I think it's a baby. Oh, it's really pretty. So, uh... I think that's a baby. It's a baby? Yeah, it's a baby. Uh, okay, reticulate python or Malay python, reticulatus, is one of the longest snakes in the world. So, uh, but it's not the heaviest. It can be one of the longest snakes in the world. And uh, the distribution of this snake is uh, in Southeast Asia and Peninsula Malaysia and also Borneo. Uh, we have uh, a big uh, num uh, quite a big number of this snake in, in Malaysia. So I think we are quite lucky to see this. So uh, this snake actually lay a clutch of eggs like and it's uh, all the eggs are connected together like Roti Chanai. When you go to Roti Chanai you see the, the white white uh, Roti Chanai ready to be you know flattened out. So this is how the egg looks like. Uh, so well I think this is very great a good find. So uh, actually python are not really bad. Actually they help to control uh, the population of uh, rats and mice uh, in our residential area. So sometimes you do see this python in the drain uh, near your house or in the housing estate. So they move nearer to human because uh, uh, their population of rats or mice which are their prey. So that's why you do see them nearby your neighborhood. Wow, great find. So I think this is it, trying to uh, kind of rest and yeah, try to camouflage itself. And you see, it's very good camouflage if you go very far away and you uh, you didn't really look properly. You cannot see it because it looks camouflage. The color is camouflage in the background. It's really, really uh, beautiful. Okay. Um, yeah. Wait a minute, I think we found something. Uh, it's a wolf snake. So, uh, wolf snake uh, is from the Lycodon uh, capucinus. This snake actually feeds on jackal. So, you do normally see them uh, near houses, like housing estate as well. Uh, but it also feeds on uh, forest gecko, so it mainly uh, is a gecko hunter, meaning that it feeds on a uh, gecko. So uh, it's mildly venomous, but it's not dangerous to humans. Okay, so yeah, so I think it's trying to hide is in here. If you come here, you can see its body, and the head is coming out. So the distinguished feature of this species compared to other wolf snake will be that you see the head, at the back of the head there's a yellow band. So it's here. So can you see the yellow band? So can you see the yellow band in the back of the head? Okay, here. If we come over here. Can you see the yellow band at the back of the head? The, the slight yellow band at the back of the head. Right? So this distinguish this uh, species from other type of wolf snake. Okay. So this species also can scale wall. If the wall has a quite rough surface, then it can scale wall to chase after geckos at houses. Alright. So the common name for this species is uh, we call it the common wolf. So there you go. So it went into hiding. So let me see if I can find it. Maybe. Nope, it's gone. 
Bye bye. Wiper, okay. This is called Wetless Heat Wiper. And wow, actually, there's a pair, there's two of them. Can you see? It? So, the, the female is the beautiful one, the black color with yellow stripe. Uh, it's, it's triple or four times the size of the male. The male is green in color with a red and white spots. And on this face, okay, you can see there's a there's a red and white stripe on its face. So that is the male. This is the female, and you can see uh, there's a different color, a different pattern, and different size between both of them. So this is what we call sexual dimorphism. Meaning that is sexually different between the male and female okay so uh, this snake you normally find in the lowland uh, of uh, Malaysian forest or peninsula Malaysia forest you also can find this in Singapore uh, you can also find this in Sumatra Indonesia and southern uh, Thailand okay so uh, in Malay you call this Ula Kapa Toko why do you call it Ulakapak Tokong? Because uh, it's very popular that people see this at the uh, snake temple in Penang. That's why it's called Ulakapak Tokong. So this one is like all uh, pit viper. These are venomous snakes. So if you are bitten by this snake, uh, go to the nearest hospital and get a thorough checkup. Okay? Although it's not a... Uh, Highly venomous, but uh, it's still uh, something that you need to take uh, caution, and then uh, you need to seek medical attention. Okay, in case you are allergic to a certain type of even is the venom is n the venom is not too strong. Okay, we would strongly advise you to go to the nearest hospital and get yourself checked. All right, so Trichodermus wetleri. So this is common name, Wagless Pit Viper. Beautiful species. Hi there! We are back on MNS Nature Grapher channel, the YouTube platform for Malaysia Nature Society. I'm Constance Teo and I have with me Dr. Vincent Teo. Hi! Yeah, welcome. Vincent, uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Vincent is a keen member uh, of the hepatology special interest group, and he will tell us what is actually hepatofauna and hepatology. Okay, sure. Uh, so hepatology actually uh, comprises of uh, uh, animals like uh, reptiles and another group, amphibians. So reptiles in reptiles group actually you have uh, snakes. Then you have the geckos, you have the lizards, uh, then you have the totara, which is only found in New Zealand. Yeah. Whereas in the amphibian group, you have uh, frogs, and you have uh, what do you call uh, toads, and also you have Sicilian. Yeah, Sicilian is actually amphibian. Oh, yeah. yeah. I uh, understand you've been, uh, you are a lecturer in uh, UM, University of Malaya. And what got, your, got your interest on and spurred you in your passion on snakes? Yeah, actually, it's uh, very surprising because um, my area uh, of work is actually in sports, mm -hmm. whereas uh, now we are talking about something related to biology. Okay, uh, the thing that actually got me really, really interested is uh, when I see uh, beautiful photos of animals, and in this case, we are talking about beautiful photos of snakes, beautiful photos of frogs and toads. Okay, so these are actually something that get me really interested. Wow, actually we do have beautiful, beautiful animals in Malaysia. I can certainly vouch for that because um, Dr. Vincent Teo has been with us on the uh, Nature Through the Lens 
uh, version 1.0 and 2.0 and uh, his pictures on the exhibition were just exquisite, beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I understand you have co-authored a book, co-written a mm. book on the land snakes of medical significance in Malaysia. I think it's the first of its kind, yeah, in uh, Malaysia, for this book. Uh -huh. How does your book help or how, how, how do um, doctors or whoever find your book helpful? Uh, okay, uh, actually it's not the first of its kind, but it's a very uh, updated, more updated version of uh, uh, snakes in Malaysia. So this book actually only feature snakes that are uh, venomous or as we call it, medically significant, meaning that it will cause uh, a lot of harm to human. Okay, mm -hmm. so when when it's not only venomous, actually in the book we also feature three uh, pythons. So why do we feature pythons? Pythons actually can cause a lot of harm because they have really sharp teeth, and they can bite a big chunk out of uh, people if if you get bitten. So it's pythons are not venomous, but it's inside the book. So the book features uh, snakes that are venomous and also snakes that are dangerous. Yeah. But how do you tell whether a snake is poisonous, venomous or non-venomous? Okay, so because it's actually quite hard to tell for uh, any layman that has uh, not much knowledge about snakes, it's hard to tell. So that's why we come up with this book. This book doesn't only serve uh, as a, a quick guide for doctors when they trade uh, uh, snake bites. It also is free uh, to all the people, mm -hmm. especially in Malaysia, you can just download the book and then you can use it as a guide. You can save it in your cell phone or your smartphone. And when you go hiking, jogging or, you know, camping, and if you see a snake and you are not sure whether it's uh, harmful or not, you can just flip through the pages, online pages, and then you, you will feel more uh, safer if you know that it's a non-venomous snake. It's not in there, that means it's, it's okay. It's not that... You know, I see. not that harmful, yeah. I see. Vincent has um, taken a lot of uh, children and as well as members of Malaysia Nature, Nature Society in field trips uh, looking for snakes. Vincent, tell us, how do you actually look for them? Do they come to you like a magnet? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I, I wish. I wish. Okay, well, uh, very good question. I think I, I always get this question whenever I, I, I hold a talk in schools and in, in also in public places. Uh, they always ask, Doctor, how do you actually find snakes? So uh, it's not an easy question to answer, but uh, firstly, you go to the habitat or the micro habitat of the type of snake that you want to find. Let's say you want to find sea snakes. So you have to go to the correct habitat, which is a mangrove or to the beaches. So if you are looking for snakes that is arboreal, so I'm introducing a new word, arboreal means snakes that are climbing snakes. So you have to look up on the trees. So for this group of snakes, uh, at night, when you shine your headlamp on them, you can see that their uh, ventral scale, or uh, in a common lay layman term, is the 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 uh, what they call the belly scale is white in color. So you can oh you can see okay, there is a snake when you see them from from the bottom okay on the under belly part. So this is how you find snake. But for those snakes that are uh, terrestrial or the snakes that are on the floor, then you have to have more skills because you have to differentiate between their color which normally camouflage very well with the environment and their movement and the pattern of their color with the surrounding. I see, I see. So it's not an easy task. I, I get a lot of frustrated uh, people that are interested to do her thing and they how can you find it? How do you find it? Well, I always tell them, well, all this come with training and a lot of experience. The more time you spend in the jungle, the easier for you to spot something. Yeah. When is the perfect time? Like, would you say uh, afternoon or, you know, what time of day do you, can you find snakes? Okay, uh, another very good question, Constant. Uh, snakes, uh, some snakes are dural, meaning that the word dural means like uh, they are more like daytime snake. So the daytime snake, you have the bronze bag, you have snakes that use their eyesight to 
search for prey. So they will come out during daytime. Even flying snakes are, are actually a neural snake. So you normally see flying snake like glide from tree to tree, chasing after a Draco. Draco is a flying lizard. Oh. So Malaysia is very lucky. We have flying snake, we have flying frogs, we have flying lizards. So these are the, the, the what they call daytime snake. But another good time to find snake or the better time to find snake are nighttime. Nighttime. Because a majority of the snake in Malaysia, not all, majority are nighttime snake. Why? Because they are shy creature. Right. So, night time normally there's uh, no human mm -hmm. or less human yes. activities. So they will come out and explore and look for prey. So if you ask me daytime or night time, I I would say uh, the better chance would be night time. Night time. Yeah. Do do you encourage children to come out with you? Uh, actually, yes. We do have many many programs, especially MNS organize a lot of. Uh, herb program mm -hmm. of herb activities we, we have a lot of children sometimes even 50% of the participants are children yeah. so uh, yes I would say yes to your yes. question right. but of course we do take precaution uh, if uh, they need to sign a consent form mm -hmm. and beside that if we see snakes if the snake is venomous yes. or dangerous in that yes. sense we will ask the, the children to uh, move backwards a bit until we mm -hmm. can uh, safely handle it yeah. and then when the snake comes down right. then the children can move a little bit closer to take a better look okay yeah okay, yeah okay. so to answer your question yes we do actually encourage children to join us sometimes we find um, snakes uh, crossing roads why why do they like to you know cross maybe it's uh, the, 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 the heat or something that makes them be on the ground or something Oh, okay. Uh, like I said earlier, sometimes snakes are the terrestrial ones. So they, they will be on the ground. Okay, so they cross road because they actually want to go to the other side of the road, which they yeah. think might, they might find food mm -hmm. or be quite prey. Right. So that's why they cross road. Okay. okay.